Greg, and it's time for another tunnel take. I get up here where you can hear me. <laughs> Back in the truck. So yeah, um, Friday evening I'm heading out of town. Got about a two and a half hour ride. Do a job I got to do for the next couple three days. Depends on how it works out. Whether or not I can make it go quick or not. You know, sometimes you have you have some great anticipations about or expectations about how fast something's going to be and something will happen and it doesn't work out, you know. I'm smoking a, a gift from uh, Brad the Builder Bearded Piper. Uh, sweet Killer Me Peterson's tobacco. And, uh, you know, uh, I've smoked about I've smoked about all this bowl down, and this uh, and it's a uh, I can honestly say that it's a average tobacco, really to me. You know, it's, it's an average tobacco, and there's nothing wrong with average. There's nothing wrong with average. I can live with this, you know. Is this the only thing I can get? I can spike him and still be a pipe smoker as supply. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of people think that they're looking for exceptional stuff. And, and I must say, we all like exceptional things, people, uh, and all the rest of it. But, you know, um, more than likely, I'm talking to an average guy right now. You're an average guy. Now you're a pipe smoker, so you're probably a little above average as I'm smoking my pipe. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> but um, but there's nothing wrong with average, you know. It means that there are some other better tobaccos out there. And uh, and when you can buy a better tobacco in bulk, cheap, oh yeah, well. The average, the average tobacco kind of slips down the totem pole, so, you know, for us pipe smokers. The sun's almost down now. Treated lumber on top of the uh, truck. The camper shell has a rack up there. And uh, here's here's something to think about. Um, I've bought ground contact salt treated lumber before. Fifteen years ago, I guess it's been. And um, and it would be green as a gourd, y'all. I'm telling you, just as green as it can be. Well, you know, today you can go in Lowe's and, and, and just buy a regular decking board, salt treated decking board, you know, regular salt treated lumber, and you can hardly tell the difference between that and a, and a plain board, you know. You can see a little green to it, but that's about it. You know, they're just, they're kind of like dipping it in there for three seconds and pulling it out. <laughs> uh, um, Today, the ground contact salt tree lumber looks like yesterday's regular salt tree lumber. Yesterday, I mean, uh, six, seven, eight years ago, stuff, you know. Still before they started pulling back on the, uh, uh, the, uh, the dip, the treatment that they're, they're putting things through. to my sons a little while back we were talking about uh, creosote they didn't know what creosote was and what's creosote sound you know like a creosote post you know and one of the boys said oh that's cre creosote what's in the chimney pipe right and I said no I'm talking about something different and I was telling a cool story about uh, my granddad was the head of the Mamsky Refuge for years and years um, and he was like the uh manager of the place and 
and uh, they would have they would they would have a lot of post that they would need for little refuge signs, you know, you know stuff like that, you know, a post for the sign to go up, that sort of thing. Well, um, I remember going with my granddad when I was probably crap. I was probably I probably was eight or nine, probably. And uh, we went to a place. Uh, it was either in Greenville or Wilson or Raleigh. Uh, and uh, and it was a creosote post production uh, company and what they did from what I can from what I gather creosote is huge vast vats of huge vats of kerosene mixed blended with tar and you set these dry post uh, telephone poles used to be made out of them. Uh, they would take these dry trees, you know, trees which were like a telephone pole, you know, delimbed and debarked and dry them out. And uh, and just put them in these huge vats. I mean, these things were big. And uh, and, and, and uh, just let them sit in there. Just let them soak the stuff up. And that, that's what it was. That, that's what I saw. I didn't see any uh, any pressure treated uh, type stuff. The lumber that you get today are put in bass and, and then locked down and then and then are uh, put under pressure, which makes the, uh, the that that, uh, that poisonous liquid that that keeps that wood from rotting or or insects getting in it and that sort of thing. It penetrates that wood fast. Today they're 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 trying to replace the uh, well years ago probably I remember 10 20 years ago they were trying to uh, whenever a, a creosote post would be broken or something they would put a replacement would replace it with a salt treated post you know or treated post we always call it a salt treated I don't know why they probably got some salt in it to keep that from, from uh, deteriorating I don't know why they, I don't know why they kind of certain amount of cyanide that was in them that would kill bugs and insects and all that. And it's not a good idea to burn or be in the smoke of a burning piece of salt tree lumber. Not a bad tobacco, y'all, I'm telling you what.
to have sprung from the salt before the ground contact stuff. If it if it holds up any better, I don't know. It probably does. Me last twice as long. They've got they got it. They may may they may have it just to last long enough to where whoever installed it will be dead by the time uh, it it rots or uh, at least uh, out of the business. You know. <laughs> Have a good evening. I'll see you now. Bye now.